Welcome to Spirit Filled Catholic Ministries. I'm Mary Beth Winchell. Enjoy the video. Hello, everybody. I'm going to give bring a few words today. Are you ready to hear? Crossing yourself. I see you've got your pen. Father, give us our, um, may our minds be alert. You know, I just went to Mass this morning and I do this at Mass. May your word be in my mind. May your word be on my lips. May your word be in my heart. And Father, I pray that your word go forth this morning, that we will hear and receive and be transformed uh, because that's what you came. You came here to transform us. You came here to renew us and to revive us and to give us hope today. So and I'm hoping through the word to bring you hope today, uh, especially if you are going through anything like the anxiety, depression, PTSD, whatever it is we're going through. Um, God wants you through it. God wants you on the other side. I want to talk today about depression and you're not here by accident. You're here because you're important to him. <clears throat> and he, he wants to hear you, you to hear this message. <clears throat> Depression, anxiety, and PTSD. I just want to say this. They are real, but they are monsters. They are oppressive. Depression is overwhelming. Anxiety is overpowering. PTSD is crippling, debilitating. It is a, and it has a strong, powerful grip, and it won't let go. Depression and anxiety are more powerful than you are. You know, most drugs that we have today in the, in the medical world today has an answer, but it's an, an answer. It's not the answer because the answer they have sometimes just doesn't work. Sometimes the answer that we have has side effects. The medicine actually is, does more to hurt us than to help us. So that isn't the answer, but we do have the answer. And I feel like I'm giving you this infomercial, infomercial and at the very end, I'm gonna tell you the answer, but hang in there because this answer is 100% effective. It is the real cure and it's Jesus Christ himself. He is the answer. He doesn't have an answer. He's not gonna write, give you an answer. He says, I am the answer. I am the Prince of Peace. I came to bring you peace. So how do you receive this medicine? Because depression and anxiety are tyrants. They're devastating. They're impossible to get free from. But we have the cure. You can't get free on your own. But God has come to set you free. And his freedom is perfect. It's 100% effective. There's no side effects. The cure is yours. And he's given it to you. It's yours free, free of charge. No side effects. We have, a, we have this temptation to believe the symptoms and to follow the symptoms and to live with the symptoms and to obey the symptoms. The devil's, the depression says, you're not getting up today, we obey. Depression says, you're not leaving the house today, we obey. The depre depression tells us what to think about and where to put our mind and what to read and we obey. And I want you to leave this call convinced because symptoms, depression, and anxiety are out to convince us. They're, con they're there to convince us they're here to stay, that you're trapped, that you have nowhere to go, and that their hold is permanent and their hold is strong. Their hold is strong only because we allow it to be strong. Mm. You know, I, I say it's, it's not going to let go until, until you force it to let go. What I'm saying by say, when, I, when I say depression and anxiety are too strong for you and they won't let go, <laughs> they won't let go because they, because you're allowing them to hold on. And this is, this is, this is so the truth. The, the only reason depression has any kind of, ins, and anxiety has any kind of hold on us is because we allow it to. Because in, in, in essence, the greater one lives in us. The one that is all powerful lives in us. So we do have the power to overcome absolutely anything, especially depression and anxiety. God called me to tell you this. I'm going to do my best, but it's, it's not me who's going to convince you. It's God in you that's going to convince you. 
John 8, 31. I, I feel like I say this a lot, but I think repetition is good. John 8, 31 to 32. Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, if you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth is that you've been set free. We've all been set free from depression and anxiety. Every single one of us. That's the truth. The truth is Jesus came to set you free. So you are free because he doesn't fail. But it's not the truth that sets us free. It's knowing the truth that sets us free. And that's where depression has a hold on us. It has a hold on us as long as we believe it has a hold on us. It has a hold on us. It is more powerful than we are as long as we believe it is more powerful than we are. That is the only thing that's holding it has to hold on. It's holding on by a thread. And that thread is your faith in it. Depression hangs on to you because you have faith in it. You have faith in, in depression's hold on you. But its hold on you is so thin. It's as thin as, uh, as your faith in it. Once your faith leaves depression, it has no hold on you. And it has, it's gone. But it's hold on you and me and us and the world. Depression has a hold on the world because the world has fallen for it and believes in it. If you do not remain in his word, you won't know that God heals. You won't know that God protects. You won't know that God cares, that God loves, that God is kind and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in mercy and love and grace. If you're not in his word, you're not going to know that because depression and anxiety are speaking loudly all day long. And we fall for it. We believe it. You know, you may have a, no matter, but, but here's the thing, no matter how clinical it is, no matter how long you've been dealing with it, it's not God's will or plan for your life. Depression in any and all of its forms, whether diagnosed or not, is a tormenting spirit. Anxiety is a tormenting spirit and it's not yours to keep and it's time for it to go. God wants you to enjoy life. You know that feeling you get when you're looking forward to something? You know, you're looking forward to a wedding. Maybe you've got something coming up, uh, something good, your birthday, a party, uh, going, even going to a movie, even getting together with friends and watching a movie. But you, you've got something in your future that you're looking forward to, and it keeps you going. God wants you to live that way every single day, and he is your reason for living. He wants you to be to know that good times are always coming. And he wants you to live that way every single day. That is the good news. God wants you to start living right now. Jesus said, the thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. And that life begins now, and we're not going to waste another day. Depression comes. Anxiety comes. It wants to take over. And you know what? It just begins with a thought, maybe a memory. This is how it begins. Maybe a thought, maybe a memory, maybe a sin, maybe an accusation. It begins with a lie that you believe and continue to believe. And before long, it is a fortress that you can't get out of. It is a stronghold and has a stronghold on you that you cannot get out of. But whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And there is nothing more powerful than the resurrected Lord. There is nothing more powerful and that greater one lives in you. Jesus said, you want me to go because if I go, I'm sending you the Holy Spirit and you want the Holy Spirit who will live in you. The power of God is the Holy Spirit. The power of God is the Holy Spirit and he's living in you. So there is no, you freedom is yours. And we, what I'm giving you today is a prescription. I'm giving you today the antidote to depression. And really, and really the antidote and the, I'm going to give you an actual prescription, but the real prescription is he, him himself. Okay. I want to give you just a four scriptures real quick on, on Jesus coming to destroy depression, Jesus coming to destroy anxiety, the enemy, because depression and anxiety are the enemy. 1 John 3, 8 says, but the son of God came to destroy the work of the devil. Just repeat that. The son of God came to destroy the work of depression. 
The son of God came to destroy the work of anxiety, panic attacks, mental illness, PTSD, every, every plague and pestilence. Acts 10, 38, you know, this is Peter talking. You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. That's for you today. Jesus went about healing and doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. God's not waiting for you to get to heaven to live a good life. God wants you living the good life here on earth. There are no devils in heaven for God, for Jesus to heal you from. There's no depression in heaven. God came to deliver you from depression and anxiety here on earth, and it begins today. Colossians 1.13 says, for he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. You've been transferred. Galatians 3.13 and 14, Christ ransomed, ransomed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us that the blessing of Abraham might be extended to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus so that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Jesus became a curse that we could become blessed. So it's time for us to live the blessed life. You've been set free, but it's now it's time to actually walk in that freedom and live in that freedom. And freedom comes through Jesus Christ. He broke every chain. I, I guess I'm just going to tell you this, this. I think you've heard this. I know I, I've written it in my book. Um, I think Ellen has shared it, but a, real briefly, if you haven't heard it, I'm going to share it really quick. There was a man who was coming, traveling from Europe to the United States, crossing the Atlantic on an, an ocean liner. And I don't, if I, if you have heard this, I'm going to say it real quick. While he's on, he spent everything he had to get to America everything. He had nothing left. He didn't even have enough money to buy food. So the whole time he just brought as much food as he could and he suffered starving on that trip. And at the end, he's walking off and disembarking and he's with a friend. He goes, man, that was a long trip. And the friend said, yeah, but at least the food was good. And he said, food, oh, I didn't get to taste any of it. I couldn't afford it. And the man looked at him, said, what are you crazy? It's part of the package. It came with the ticket. You mean you went this whole trip without enjoying the food? God does not want you to get to the end of your life and having missed out on enjoying his blessings. He came, he became a curse that we could become blessed. Your, your blessings have already been paid for. God doesn't want you barely getting by. He wants you blessed and living a blessed life so you can go share that with everyone else. Tell God, show off what a great God you have. But we're so comfortable with the curse and the blessings. We just don't believe that we are good enough. We don't believe we deserve those blessings. But if a good life and a good future is not for you, then it's not for anyone. You have to know today that God has a good life for you. You know, I don't, if you don't think you deserve to be healed of depression or anxiety, join the crowd. You don't. Jesus doesn't heal us because we deserve it. He heals us because it's his nature to heal. He longs to heal. So much so that the Bible says he took our infirmities and he bore our diseases with him on the cross. He did it for, if he did it for one of us, he did it for all of us. And no one deserves this more than you. No one deserves this less than you. If anyone deserves it, you deserve it. You know, when Jesus walked on this earth, I'm not going to give you all the scriptures because I do it all the time on this call. There are probably eight to 10 of them that says Jesus healed everyone. Everyone who came to him, Jesus healed. He never said no to anyone. You can go through every scripture and every healing verse. Everyone who came to him, he said, let's go. Yes, let's do it. He didn't heal just the good people. He healed them all. When Jesus realized this, he withdrew from that place. Many people followed him and he cured them all. I'm just giving you one example. And it says it over and over again that he healed them all. And I thought of all these crowds of people. And I said, wow, Jesus healed them all? Like, didn't he say just for you people who are good or just for you who are following me or just for you who are obeying the law? No, he healed them all. He didn't say 
He didn't heal just the good people. Don't let your feeling of unworthiness keep you from receiving healing that Jesus paid for because you don't deserve it, but nobody does. I was telling a friend this, I was telling this friend of mine this, I said, you know, the Bible says over and over that he healed everyone, that everyone who came to him or was brought to him was healed. And I said to him, I said to this friend of mine, I said, you know, many of those people did not deserve to be healed. And he looked at me and he said, Mary Beth, none of them deserve to be healed. Not one person that Jesus healed deserved to be healed. If you're waiting for you to, be, to deserve healing, you'll be waiting forever because you're never going to be worthy of it. Jesus is worthy. Jesus did it. Jesus earned it for you. Jesus is worthy because he's worthy. He, that's his gift to you. He makes you worthy. I don't know. I, I can't tell this enough. We, we're still wanting to, to earn our way to, to God, but um, it's impossible. So God did it for us. God wants, Jesus wants a relationship with you. You aren't worthy. Neither am I. Not one person Jesus ever healed was worthy. We're just not worthy of God, but he makes us worthy. He makes us worthy by his blood, the Bible says. Just at Mass, it said this. I just heard it at Mass. By his blood, we have been forgiven of all our sins. I can't remember exactly how it went. But it's by his blood that we are forgiven. Not by what you do that you're forgiven. But by his blood that forgives us. Because he went to the cross. We are forgiven. It's a free gift. God declared us holy and clean. Thank, thanks be to God. You know, I've, I went this weekend to Lorraine's and she had me at her, at her house and I gave this teaching and I also gave my testimony on what God did for me. I'm not going to give it here because I think you've heard it before, but God did not. God called me in my kitchen and he said, come to me first, Mary Beth, and then you will have the power because he knew I was seeking him. I didn't know I was seeking him, but I, but I was seeking him. I needed something to live for. I, I was a mess. My life was in shambles. It was, I felt, I felt, I couldn't even talk to people. I felt so, so self-conscious. I never thought I was good enough for anything or anybody. I hated myself and I hated my life. I literally couldn't look people in the eye and talk to him. I never had a, a I never had an opinion. My, ever, my opinion was what anybody wanted my opinion to be. That was my opinion. I was that low. I felt that bad about myself. And God met me in my kitchen. And he said, come to me first, and then you will have the power. And I screamed, yes. And I've been following God ever since. I, that day, the God of all gods wanted me. That's all I knew. All I knew is he wanted me to partner with him. He was saying, come to me. And I was like, what? You want me? How could you want me? You want me? He said, come to me first and then you will have the power. And I said, you want me? Yes. How could I say no? God wants you so badly. And he wants you just the way you are. This is the killer I had just had an affair with a married man, moved to Houston to get away, to start over. I had just had an abortion. I hadn't been to confession. God wanted me just the way I was. If he wanted me in that condition, then he'll, he wants you. Okay, I'm going to just jot down. And I'm going to ask you this question. Does God love Mother Teresa more than you? You don't have to answer. I'll ask it later. Um, does God love Mary more than you? We believe this. We believe God loves Mother Teresa more than, than he has to love her because of all she's done. <laughs> does God love Pope John Paul II more than you? God doesn't love anyone more than you. And his mind is made up about you and it never changes. His mind's made up. He isn't making up his mind regarding you. He's already made up his mind and proved it when he sent his son to die for you just the way you are. If he, if he waited you for you to be perfect, then there would be no reason for him to come and die. 
if you had to do it on your own and get your life right on your own, then there's no reason for God to have ever sent a son to die because we wouldn't have needed him. But I want to share the scripture from John 17 with you because it's going to blow you away. Because not only does God love you the same as he loves Mary, Mother Teresa, and John Paul, he loves you the same as he loves Jesus. Father, Jesus, this is Jesus' prayer to God. And he says, I pray, he's praying for us. He says, as one, that the world may know that you sent me and that you love them even as you loved me. Here it is. That's it. Jesus says, I want the world to know that you love them even as you love me. Jesus is saying the same way you love me, you love them. Depression and anxiety are the enemy. You're not fighting a normal disease. This isn't just a disease. This is an attack, a force that needs to be reckoned with. And it has been reckoned with. And sometimes it seems like it has powerful, it may feel very powerful, but its power over you has been destroyed. But it's not going to quit faking it and acting like it has power as long as you believe it. Have you ever seen, um, I don't know if you've ever, uh, okay, let's imagine you have a home and in the back of your yard is a bunch of acres, wooded acres. And one day, some hunters come and set up camp in your woods. You can't see them from your house, but they're there in your woods on your property and they are hunting. Are they allowed there? No. Are they gonna leave there? No, not until you find them and kick them out. Then they're going to leave. But as long as you're not kicking them out, they're going to stay there and trespass. And that's what depression is and anxiety. They're trespassers trespassing on private property. But it's time for you to wake up and to know that Jesus has triumphed over this disease. And I'm really going long. Depression will steal from you only what it can. Anxiety will take from you what it can but only what it can, only what you let it. But today's the day you start fighting back. You know, um, I, I've used this before, but I'm going to use it again. You know the pigs in the parlor? Imagine you have pigs in your, uh, in, in your living room. And if you have, that's what depression is. Depression is like pigs living in your living room. You can live with them as long as you can live with them. You can pick up after them. You can pick up their poop and clean up after them. You can tolerate them. You can stay out of their way, you know, or you can open the door and kick them out and drive them out. And God, it's time for you to drive out uh, depression and anxiety. And it begins with just making this decision to do it. And today, today's the day you're making a decision that you are free. You know, sometimes when somebody has depression, everyone has to stay away from that person. We have to walk on tiptoes around that person. That day is over. It's not fair for your family. It's not fair for your children, your grandchildren, your husband, your, your wife. It's not right what you put them through because you've, you are keeping holding on to and allowing depression to kill, steal, and destroy you and your family. And today's the day you are declaring your freedom. Does anyone know, and I don't see you all, but does anyone know the day that we, the United States, won the Revolutionary War? Big war for our country, the biggest war. Does anyone know the date that we won that war? If you do know it, uh, unmute and let me know. <laughs> the day we won the Revolutionary War was September 3rd, 1783. It's the day we signed the peace treaty in Paris, September 3rd, 1783. No one in America knows that date. That's not the important date. The date we remember is the date we declared our independence. The day we declared our independence is the day we celebrate every single year, July 4th, 1776, our day of independence. That's the day we mark as the day of our independence. Today is that day for you. Today is the day that you make the decision that you're declaring your freedom from depression, anxiety, PTSD, whatever it is. And then, you know what? When it just real, it, when it lifts up its ugly head against you, you just know, remember this date. No, 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 refuse it. No, today's the day. What day's today? 
April 29th is the day I made that decision. Whatever day it is that you make the decision, you're making the decision to be free. You know, every time you go to communion, remember the day that Jesus died for you. We do it. We say every single time we go to communion, we're remembering the day of victory. Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. Re remember the day that he died for you and me. That's what you go. Every time you go to communion, remember he died for you, that you're free to walk free, free and show off. You know what? We don't, every time we are walk depressed, we're showing off the devil and his kingdom. It's time today we show off God and his blessings and his kingdom, not the devil's kingdom. That's what we show off when we're depressed and anxious and worried and fearful. And it's time for us to Okay, I have so much more to do, but I'm going to go right now to sharing because it's getting late, and I want to share and open up some scriptures with you all so we can share. And then I also want to do, um, I want to end today with a dec us with a prescription, a declaration. I want you to declare something to you, that you're going to speak this to you, that you will remember who you are. Um, actually, let's start with that, and then we'll open up the scripture. So I'm going to share the screen. I think this is it. Yes. Okay. So what I'm going to ask one person to do is read this whole page and for us to read it out loud. Also, uh, this is our declaration of freedom. Um, I am free. I am no longer a slave to depression and anxiety. I am the daughter of the King of Kings. I am strong in his mighty power for his power is in me. Depression and anxiety, you are trespassing on private property. Jesus died to give me victory over fear and anxiety, depression and disease. So I choose victory and I command you to go. I command you, depression and anxiety, to go. He became cursed so I could become blessed. Jesus took depression and therefore I am free. He destroyed its hold on me, so I am walking out of and away from this tormenting disease, healed, whole, and completely free, not because I earned it or deserve it, but because Jesus died to give me freedom. He died to set me free from depression and anxiety. Today, I choose to receive life and live. Okay. You, Lord, are my savior. You go before me and conquer my enemies. Those who are too strong for me, I am at rest in you. My mind is at peace because my mind rests on you and your word. I believe you, Lord, when you say in your word that no weapon fashioned against me will prosper or harm me. I believe your word that says no harm will befall me and no disaster will come near my tent. My mind is yours, Lord. I command all my thoughts into obedience to you, Lord Jesus. You are Lord of me and my, my thoughts. I am forgiven and free from all the past and all memories. You are my rock, the firm foundation on which I stand. I take refuge in you and I declare I am victorious. I am alive. I am healed, I am strong, I am more than a conqueror. I am perfectly and wonderfully made. I am your child, I am yours. Amen. The blood of Jesus has rescued me from power of darkness and therefore these feelings are lies. This depression is a lie. I am God well. To believe it. I am whole because Jesus made me whole. I am healed because he bore my sickness, pain, and disease. By his stripes, I am healed. God has delivered me from every evil. I have been redeemed from the curse. My God has delivered me from the power of darkness and conveyed me into the kingdom of the son of his love. I am filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in me. Okay, and last little paragraph. Finally. Does someone else want to read? Go ahead. 
Go ahead, Linda. I'll, I'll read. Oh, okay. Um, finally, I command my mind to obey Jesus Christ. I take authority over my mind and command it to obey you, Lord Jesus. I command all my thoughts into submission. I lift up the shield of faith as protection from every voice and word that is not of God. You are Lord of my mind. Amen. 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 Praise God. And I know I've told you the story, but when I Amen. tell it very quickly, when I was on the plane and I was losing my mind and I thought I was going to, you know, fall, fall onto the ground and foam at the mouth. And I started freaking out. Um, my heart was beating. I thought I was, I thought I was going to lose it and go crazy. And they would have to stop the plane. I didn't know what they were going to do, but I, but I prayed and I begged to God. I said, Lord, help me, Lord, help me. And then I kept saying, okay, that wasn't working. I just said, I trust you, Lord. I trust you. I trust you. Nothing was working because my mind was still on me going crazy. But when I finally got to that bathroom and I looked at myself in the mirror, I heard this word and I heard the Holy Spirit say, it's just a thought. And I said, ah, I'm being ruled by thoughts. I am letting myself be ruled and destroyed by a thought. It's just a thought. And I said, I command you thoughts into obedience in the mighty name of Jesus. And I was immediately set free. Immediately, I could walk back to my seat and I was totally perfectly fine. You know, sometimes we, though, we just hold on to that begging and praying and praying and God's not going to give you something he's already given you. He's given you power. And that's what's so hard for us to believe. The power, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. And we have power over all the power of the enemy. And it's our mind and it's time for us to take authorities. Hi, this is Mary Beth Winchell. If you're still here, if you're still watching, I want to invite you to join us on this Zoom call. Just contact me at mbwinchell at gmail.com. M, I'll write it out for you. Let me know you want to, to join and I will send you an email with the link to join us on Zoom. Also, every single day at 7 a.m. Dallas time, that's central U.S. time, I have a prayer meeting or we have a prayer meeting. A bunch of us get together every single day from 7 a.m. to 7.30 ish in the morning on telephone. No, you, no one will see you. Join us. Just dial the phone number and I will send you that also. So see you soon. Bye. Thanks for watching.